Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about step-by-step -step guide installing OpenShift cluster 4.13 on a single ESX host 8.0. In our previous session, we talked about pre-implementation steps, implementation procedure. Now, so that I will just quickly, we already talked about the solution architecture previous session and we already talked about IP address list. Now pre-implementation also we completed. Now coming to the implementation procedure, in our previous session, I talk about until the creating infrastructure resources using Bash and Node and the installation is taking approximately 45 minutes to 60 minutes. But somehow our installation got failed. So what I did is I approached the alternative method. Why the installation failed is, the reason is, let me connect to our lab system. If you see in our vCenter, earlier we have tried our ESXi host, only within a cluster we have one ESXi host, we have a DC server, Windows Active Directory server, and our OpenShift helper VM, in other words, Bash and Node, and we have a vCenter server. Within the same ESXi host, we have the total memory capacity is 64 GB only. Our actual memory capacity is 64 GB, approximately 63.74. That means it's equivalent to 64 GB. But when we are creating a OpenShift cluster, three master and three workers, the average CPU, if I go to the VM tab, you can see all three masters, it have a CPU count is each VM have a four CPU. And even memory also, each virtual machine have a 16 GB memory. Suppose if I open our Excel sheet, Let's say I just copied it within our Excel sheet. Just for our understanding, we have a three masters, three workers, OpenShift VMs. So we have a four CPU and also each VM consists of 16 GB memory and hard disk size is 120 GB. The total requirement for the OpenShift in order to run the OpenShift cluster, we need a 24 CPUs and the memory is 96 GB of total memory and 720 GB hard disk space. So this is the requirement to implement the OpenShift cluster on vSphere platform or specifically a single ESXi host. But somehow our ESXi host running with only 64 GB memory and even within that 64 GB memory, we already allocated some memory to the DC server 4 GB and even helper VM also utilizing 8 GB and vCenter server also utilizing 14 GB. That means approximately we already utilizing 20 GB, 20 plus GB is already assigned. So in order to allocate a 96 GB, our ESX one received a memory usage high alert. So our installation got failed actually. If you see here earlier when I trying to run, there is a installation failure error messages. If I scroll down, the installation is earlier, it was a fail due to the memory usage. So to address that one, what I did is, I just added a, another ESX host under cluster two, because our lab main objective is deploy OpenShift cluster on single ESX host. So to achieve that one, what I did is I selected another host. This, this host is Intel NUC box, and this is also running with 64 GB memory. And how we prepared is, while deploying a OpenShift cluster, I choose ESX2 instead of ESX1. When, I, when we have a error message, I selected the ESX2 because in our ESX1, we do not have enough memory. That is the reason we select ESX2. Even if you notice the ESX2, there is a Amber alert. There is a host memory usage alert. Reason is we have 64 GB memory, but in our total memory, we are utilizing 96 GB. That means we are already over committed. That's why this warning message is expected. Okay, but when we are trying to use a second ESX host, the installation got succeeded. When you see the messages here, installation is complete. Okay, and even earlier, uh, as I mentioned, there is a bootstrap node, even bootstrap node also, if you see the message here, destroying the bootstrap resources, that means bootstrap VM got removed. Even in our architecture, I mentioned bootstrap as a temporary mesh only. So it's removed the bootstrap VM automatically and after that it took 40 minutes time. So overall installation time, it's, if you see the at the end, you will see the total time it took is 55 minutes. 
okay and at the end of the installation you can see the open shift web console here so you can just copy the web console from here or you can copy the complete information you can copy to the notepad also let's say this is the overall information and to access our open shift console this is the url and id is cube admin so launch the web browser you can use a google chrome and enter this url and click on advance and proceed to console when you click on this it will launch our open shift console see this is the red hat welcome to red hat open shift and default administrator is cube admin and the password also so whatever the information you can see in the screen you can see the password okay so just copy this password and paste it here now we can log in okay we are successfully logged into the open shift console you can see the current version it is 4.13.10 and our infrastructure provider is vSphere. And we, even if you see in our vCenter, we are successfully run all our OpenShift cluster on a single ASX. Because it's a lab host, we are running with 64 GB memory. Suppose if you want to run the OpenShift helper VM and all, you can run it on a local machine or you, even you can create on workstation also fine. So for testing purpose, I moved our infrastructure VMs to another host and the OpenShift cluster dedicated for one ASX host okay hope you understand this point and now coming to the installation portion after we monitor the installation status completed successfully finally okay but earlier it was failed due to the resource issue but when i initiated second time second time when i initiate the create cluster that time there is no much issues it's just a normal warnings ignorable warnings finally installation is completed and even we are successfully logged into the open shift web console and cluster status is healthy and to verify the how many nodes and all under the red hat open shift console we can see the option or administrator and developer so normally under the administrator view you can see uh, the infrastructure cluster API address, cluster ID, and also the platform vSphere OpenShift version 4.13.10. And we have a trial version, 60 days trial version. Okay, and the update channel is stable version. Now, to verify the node information, within the dashboard, you can just come to the compute and select the nodes. You can see the node information. You can see master zero, master one, master two, worker zero, that means workers also three workers and the whatever cluster name we given during the installation ocp413 the all our names starts with the same name ocp413 some uh, delta number hyphen master hyphen zero okay and each master node you can see master node we can also call it as control plane vm and these three are the worker node vms these are all the key what is the, the specific roles for this cluster okay and we have the memory information cpu file system all the details okay now another key point is suppose if i want to connect the same open shift cluster using command line you can see multiple options here you can see copy login command and click on display token you can see the login with this token you can use this command that is one method and another method within this console you can click on question mark you can see there is an option for command line tools when you click on command line tools you can see see the copy login command and we can also download even if you want to connect from your local system like download OpenShift container for Linux, for Mac, for Windows, Linux, other flavors also we can try to connect. Even you can use Helm CLI as well. So currently for the time being, I'm using a, a copy login command. So just copy this command and connect to our OpenShift cluster via command line. I'm using the same helper VM. So just copy paste the same command here. When you copy paste this command, we are it's asking to use insecure connection. We are securely okay to connect this connection. When you see the message here, so log into this api.ocp413 gcglab.com 6443 admin using token provided so we are able to log into this open shift cluster via command line and default it is using the project default project and you currently we have access to 67 projects okay to see the project information they given the command oc space projects so just copy the command and paste it here so you can see all the default projects 
okay all the whatever they mentioned 67 projects all the 67 default projects information okay and even if you want to see the command line what is the how many nodes we have oc get space nodes when you type oc space get nodes you can see three masters and also three workers and the back end the kubernetes version is 1.26 even though it is OpenShift, as we are aware, OpenShift is a enterprise grade Kubernetes platform and the backend, it still use the Kubernetes. The Kubernetes version is version 1.26, okay? And if you need any additional details like OC get nodes space hyphen O wide, you can see the additional details like you can see the internal IP address, external IP address and what is the operating system it uses for all three masters and three workers it uses a red hat enterprise linux core os and version is 4.13 okay uh, <clears throat> excuse me this is the complete build number okay now we we have validated our console and also we have validated our console from the command line as well okay now the login command also we verified how we can get it is we can get it from the cube admin select copy login command or else another option is you can go here command line tools you can see the copy login command okay suppose if you want to see the developer view go to the developer view within the developer view we can see the some additional options like if you want to add any project just uh, you can click on create a new project for example let's say the project name is demo and display name also demo description i mentioned as demo let's click on create that means within the demo project how many ways we can deploy application there are plenty of ways so we can have a developer catalog for all services databases we can have a predefined six items are available and same way if i go back you can see the options operator back to helm chart even we can deploy the applications using git repository and container images and helm chart repositories and there are also some sample applications also available there are 16 sample applications available for example dotnet application basic node.js basic python java and hdb some applications are available generally these login credentials openshift login credential whenever we provide it to our development team they usually focus to log into developer view and they will work on a application deployment but application deployment there are multiple ways these are all the possible ways even we can deploy the virtual uh, deploy application using import from a aml or you can upload any existing developed jar file also you can upload it here to run a your project project related applications okay and suppose for the specifically to the uh, maintain a image registry uh, within our red hat we have a official registry square you can use red hat Square image registry also to deploy our production related applications okay in our later sessions i will talk about how we can deploy the applications on red hat openshift even within the administration tab there are other options like if i go to the operator hub you can see there are readily available 508 items we can use some so many operators aml learning application runtime multiple categories of operators are available you can run also within the openshift container for example if you want to install your advanced cluster management you can just type advanced cluster management you can see the advanced cluster management and you can select the advanced cluster management and install same way whatever operators you want to install you can just install and try okay now let's back to the slide See, we already verified the infrastructure and we monitor until installation complete. Just now we verified the screen and we have successfully in completed the installation portion. Now, coming to the another point, Red Hat OpenShift deployment post implementation procedure. Within the post implementation procedure, what we have to do is access the OpenShift web console. We just now access the OpenShift web console and our production cluster is ready. So just testing purpose, we installed in our test lab, but the same way in the production also. Once the cluster implementation is completed, the whatever the login credentials we have, the OpenShift cluster URL, cube admin and password, we have to provide it to our 
developer team so that means it's a production cluster ready and we can do our day to installation operations okay day to install operation means whatever the application you want to install you can run it on a our open shift cluster and for administrative life cycle means you can use a manually to update and upgrades on our open shift to master nodes and worker nodes or alternatively you can also use advanced cluster management to manage our open shift cluster as well as life cycle management okay and also run our production workloads and the scale out worker nodes is all the common task not only limited to this task we there will be a, so many tasks okay hope you understand the post implementation procedure and another observation within the post implementation when we install your open shift container platform on vSphere environment you can see by default it's create one folder so we'll observe this information so by default one folder means if you log into vcenter server go to the vms and templates tab if i expand here you see you can see there is a ocp413 if you see the above one see the above one is the first one where we got an error message due to memory issue so that one still exists uh, and this is a it is running on a esx2 and if you see there is a folder is created automatically okay and another point is one tag category there will be a one specific tag and tag is created for this our open shift cluster <clears throat> you can see and this tag information you can find from the tag section under tags and custom attributes you can see there will be a ocb tag is already created even there will be a category also created okay and the same point i highlighted here one tag category one tag is created and virtual machine there will be a one virtual template is created what is the template is if you see here go to the inventory tab and vms and template there is a template is created using this template only it's deployed all these six vms okay so template also created and another one one temporary bootstrap temporary bootstrap means initially it's created bootstrap and after that it's removed automatically this notice this option also we verified from our command line when you see here there is a during the before installation complete it clearly mentioned that bootstrap destroying the bootstrap resource that means it's removed the bootstrap vm okay the same information we can also find from the monitor task and events also there will be a log for the destroying the bootstrap vm okay there is a message specific message within the vcenter logs we can see that that vm is completely removed bootstrap vm okay now another key point is three control plane nodes three compute machines so three control plane nodes we already verified control plane nodes means three master node and three worker nodes okay so post implementation all the resource validation is completed okay this is also we validated and another one overall deployment process if you just quickly recall initially we created a install config ml file using this ml file only we started our open shift install create cluster okay we we use the command create cluster command and it uses default images red hat core operating system at its uh, it's created its ignition and it's created a bootstrap node first using the bootstrap node only it's build the bootstrap cluster okay and the what bootstrap cluster do it's created a three master node and also it's created a three worker nodes okay once these three are created it says that remove the bootstrap node and cluster so it's already removed okay and once we it's added a worker node three worker nodes what it's mentioned as infra resources created bootstrap cluster life cycle production cluster is created so once the bootstrap removed it, production cluster means only three master nodes and three worker nodes and the final steps are cluster available for a production and we are good to install a day to install operations and we can assign this credential information to developer team so the developer team they can utilize to install their project specific applications okay so hope you understand the complete deployment procedure okay so that's it if you are watching this video first time please do view like share and subscribe to the gnan cloud garage channel if you are already subscribed i appreciate all your support bye for now